Caring viewers, welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. Today's show examines the cruel treatment of our noble equine friends in horse racing and related industries. Horses have been humankind's helpers for centuries. These majestic animals evoke images of grace, strength and gentleness. The horses are amazingly adept and intuitive at picking up on behaviour because that's how horses communicate completely through body language. So they can read someone's state of mind from 10 yards and they're very social animals so horses are, are very, they're social they're inquisitive they're large there's a lot of things about them that are just make them absolutely fantastic therapists basically However, these highly intelligent, sensitive creatures are routinely abused in horse racing. As Dr. Holly Cheever, award-winning veterinary surgeon and expert on animal abuse prevention notes, cruelty is an inherent part of the horse racing industry. Race horses are thoroughbreds that are genetically manipulated to run as fast as possible. This process begins on stud farms where mares or mothering horses are kept constantly pregnant. In fact, 90% of their time is spent in pregnancy, whereas in nature, mares only bear a single foal every two years or so. Horses usually give birth in spring when there is abundant grass and the weather warms up, as this gives the foals the greatest chance of survival. However, breeders often manipulate the mare's natural cycle so they give birth in the winter and the young horses can be made ready for racing sooner, thus maximizing profits. To change a mare's reproductive clock, she is injected full of the drug known as prostaglandins. Her living environment is altered. Lights in her living quarters are left on longer than usual to mimic longer days and the temperature is raised causing great confusion and disorientation for the mare. Next, she is forcefully impregnated by a stallion that is also kept at the farm. Once the foals are born, they are taken away from their mothers to be raised as racehorses. The mares are then impregnated again and this continues until she can no longer reproduce and the same applies for stallions. They are then sold to knackeries where they are slaughtered and made into pet food, while their bones are used to make glue. Racehorse foals have to be nursed, but if their mothers are sent to the slaughterhouse, how can they get milk? The answer lies in a very dark corner of the horse raising industry. Nurse mares are female horses used to produce milk for valuable or thoroughbred racehorses. In order to be able to produce milk, these horses must become pregnant and give birth so that they can lactate and provide milk for the more valuable horses. The nurse mares' own babies cannot be provided with milk as their mothers are feeding racehorses, so the nurse mares' foals are brutally killed. As it is illegal to send ponies under six months old to the slaughterhouse, they are killed on site by having their heads smashed in with heavy wooden or metal clubs. Alternatively, they are just left in the field to starve to death. The babies are then skinned and their leather is used to make high-end fashion items such as purses and shoes. In some countries, the baby ponies are skinned alive as this is believed to make their flesh more tender. The meat is subsequently sold for human consumption. 
Each year, in countries around the world, hundreds of thousands of foals are produced for the horse racing industry. Between 60 to 70 percent are killed at a young age if they are deemed unsuitable for racing or have genetic defects or other disorders. Some of these animals are used to replace breeding stock or may be sold to circuses or rodeos. Foals that make it through the selection procedure to become race horses are subjected to rigorous, harmful and damaging training methods. At just one and a half years old, while their bodies and skeletal systems are still growing, these young horses are pushed to their capacity and made to run as fast as they can while carrying heavy loads. Many horses begin racing as young as two years of age when they are still growing and are physically immature, which hugely increases the risk of injury. Most of the time, for 22 hours a day, the horses are kept isolated in stalls barely big enough to turn around in. This is done to make them more susceptible to human training and to reduce management and upkeep costs. This constant confinement is extremely stressful to these free social beings and many of the animals begin to exhibit neurotic behaviors such as swaying from side to side, walking in circles and chewing on railings. During training of racehorses, fractures and broken bones are far too common. Veterinary costs and the need to get the horses racing means that they are sent for slaughter if they cannot run soon. Those horses who survive are made to run all year round on hard tracks at speeds of 30 to 40 miles per hour. Since the animals weigh a thousand pounds and run at such high speeds on ankles not much bigger than those of humans, many race horses suffer fatal injuries on tracks around the world, from broken legs and pelvises to torn tendons and heart attacks or worse. In the United Kingdom alone, more than 400 horses die on the track each year. And in the United States, the number is double this. Many horses also incur other injuries, such as chipped bones or stiff knees, and others suffer from an excruciating condition known as shin soreness, in which even a slight touch to the shin brings the horse down to its knees in pain. However, a horse that is not running is considered unprofitable, and so it is pumped full of painkillers and is forced to run by fear and violence. When Animal World, our co-inhabitants, returns, we will further investigate the suffering inflicted upon race horses. Please keep your dial tuned to Supreme Master Television.